Josh Zed here, Full RD Photography, and this is a follow-up video to how to remove shadows in Photoshop. The first time that I made this video, or the last video that I made, um, it was really because I saw a video online that said, you cannot remove shadows in Photoshop. And I'm thinking, well, you, you kind of can. It is sort of digital plastic surgery, but you kind of can do it. Um, I wouldn't say it would work every time. Really, um, you got to check and see, if, is, is the quality of your image decent enough to do it? Um, is the image worth it? I mean, this is my daughter. She's hard to pose sometimes. I really like this image, but the shadow sucks. I mean, a lot of times, uh, shadows accent the face. Uh, usually when, you know, you, you did it on purpose and you, you sort of had a reason and you had a decent position of the shadow, and in this case, it's not. This is just terribly positioned shadow on her face, and I want it gone. Um, so I thought I'd make an easier version of the video I made last time, one that you can understand a bit easier. So I'm going to start off right now by using the pen tool and just like drawing around this shadow area. And I'm not even going to like be super accurate. I'm just going to make sure I'm going around it as best. I, this is not the best I can. I could easily just be way more accurate. I could take my time and whatnot, but I'm not going to do that. So just lightly around the shadowed area. Now I go up here and I'm going to hit selection and then make a selection. I'm not going to feather it at the moment. I'm going to do it a different way, but make sure the feather radius is zero and hit OK. Now I have a selection. Now I want to feather this selection uh, so it sort of blends nicely uh, from the non-shadowed areas to the shadowed areas. Um, and I'm going to do that by going to select and select and mask. And if you have an older version of Photoshop, I'm going to cancel this in the moment. At the moment, if you have an older version of Photoshop, you'd have um, I'd go at, with CC. I hit Shift and go to Select, and then I go to Selecting Mask, and it brings me the old Refine Edge tool. This is what you'd find in the older versions, like CS6 and whatnot. But I'm not going to use that. But if you were, if you do have this, you'd use this, and you would bring the feather up here. That's too far. It's too far. So about, I'd say about there where it starts to really feather around the edges here. Depends on the image you're using, uh, how far you go up with the feather, but this is, I'd say this is how it looks here is how I, how I do it. So if you look in here, it was just sort of nicely feathered around the edges here. And then I hit OK, but I'm going to cancel that and do it the new way, or with new, the new tool, filter, or sorry, select, select and mask, and then do the same thing here, feather until it looks nice to me. About there, hit OK, boom, now it's feathered. Now I'm going to go up here, hit curves, it's a curves adjustment layer. It's going to, now it's going to take that selection and it's going to make a mask from that selection. And now I'm just going to raise the curves until the face looks like it matches. Wow, look at that, the shadows are coming, are going away. Yay, I hit it there, that looks good. I'm going to leave it there. Now we have this little blotchy area, which I'm not a fan of because, as you can see, that doesn't look right. So for me to get rid of that, I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to make sure that my sample size is around 51 by 51. It could be 31 by 31. Um, depends on the quality of your image. Essentially, if I zoom in and I look at all these pixels, I want a 51 by 51 radius here. and It's going to take an average of those colors there when I sample it. So. Uh, and then I can draw with this. thing here. I think it's called the brush tool. And uh, make sure the opacity is low and uh, the flow is pretty low. 
you know, you just start sampling around here and drawing back in sort of similar color to the area and just be as accurate as you can. Take your time until, of course, it looks like it matches. And make sure that you do have a low opacity, like a low flow. This way, you're not going to make it super blotchy when you're drawing in. And just take your time and sample a lot so that the colors match. I'm going to zoom out a bit so I can actually see it from a further out perspective. And I actually don't much like this so much. I much prefer, you can do it this way, but you can also do it another way. I'm going to kill this layer, make a new layer, and I use the clone stamp tool with a lower opacity as well. Make sure current and below uh, sample is selected as well. And I'm just going to draw it in this way. And it does virtually the same thing. And just change the size of your brush as you need until until everything sort of matches. You can you can adjust your opacity as you need and your flow as you need. And just sort of draw things in until they blend and look like they belong together. Like there wasn't a shadow there to begin with. Anyways, that's it. This is the before. This is after. Pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, not super complicated, I hope. Anyways, if you like that video, remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Check out my other videos. I got like comedy and like vlogs and, and, and photography stuff. And uh, yeah, generally it's foolhardy photography, not like super common sense photography. But when I can, I try to give, you know, information and help you if, if, if I can do that. Anyways, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Have a great day.